What's going on everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now and today we're headed to the eastern part of Arizona to a small mining town called Morenci and we're going to stop at some cool towns along the way like Superior, Globe Miami and much more. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we are leaving out of Phoenix metro area on US 60. Right along here you'll see Bryce Thompson Arboretum before you get to Superior but quite the drive. Located here in Pinal County, it has a population of 2,400 people with an elevation of just under 3,000 feet. So it can get a bit chilly up here. The name comes from Lake Superior as the management team who was overseeing the Silver King Mine. They were actually, they're actually from Lake Superior. The original name was Queen, which had a population of around 100 people in 1880. There was one general store, two hotels, and numerous saloons along with the post office, but you know, lots of mining comes with saloons. And for those of you who live down by Queen Creek, this is actually nearby the headwaters for the Queen Creek that is now dried up, but they used to call this Queen, but now it's Superior. Does it all make sense, right? So yeah, hasn't really changed much in the last 40, 50 years because the mining is really dried up out here. Formerly a part of the Apache Indian Reservation, you'll notice there's an area called the Apache Leap and the Apache Tears. You can do some research on that if you head up here. Now here we go through the Queen Creek Tunnel, which was built in 1952. It's about 1,217 feet long. And as you go through here, you end up in the top of the world on the way to Globe, Miami. And because the elevation changes, you'll notice it goes into a high chaparral, almost ponderosa pine environment. Now here we are at the top of the world as it's called. It's an unincorporated town with about 250 people sitting at around 4,400 feet. The reason they call it the top of the world is because there's a little nook of pines right here known as Mason's Valley, and they considered it a bit of an oasis in fact, the name origin of Pinal County actually can attribute this area for that because Pinar in Spanish means pine groves in the mountains and this little mountain range stretch right here south of Globe west of Superior is how it got its name, Pinal County, because of this little stretch of pine. Heading back out on US 60, we're approaching Globe Miami as you can see, but the road out here is quite dramatic with the scenery as you're going up into the high desert approaching the pine trees of the White Mountains as you keep going up here. You'll even see the Salt River is just off to the north of here, and that's where Roosevelt Dam is. We're not going there though. We did a full video on Roosevelt Lake. If you guys wanna check that out, you can do so. The population up here in Miami is around 1,800 people. It's kinda of losing population, not really gaining. The sister city right next door is Globe. That's why the area is known as Globe, Miami. Here you have the Freeport McMoran uh, copper mine and some other mining activity going on still, but they also have the Bullion Building or Bullion Plaza Museum that you can check out while here. So lots of history related to the Apache natives as well as the prospectors and the miners that were establishing the area known as Miami and then onto Globe. And if you wanna check out an old historical gem, this is the Lyric Soda Fountain restaurant. This is right here in the heart of downtown Miami, if you want to call it the heart of Miami. It's quite sleepy in here, but really historical place. And this little gem right here is worth noting with five stars on Google. Here's the Bullion Plaza Museum. This is the actual museum. And now here we are at Globe, also known as Besh Ba Gawa, known as Place of Metal in the Apache language, right here in Gila County. This one's a bit older and a bit bigger than Miami with a population of around 7,200 people. In 1875, it was established as a mining camp with tourism involved. The downtown area in Globe is a bit more happening than you'll find in Miami, although I would suggest doing both if you can, because I think in a few years, both of these places will go down as tourist hotspots where people go far and wide to see what it used to be like out here. So that's just my projection of what's coming for this area. I think it's an underrated area that's gonna become more popular with tourists, especially as the stories start getting out there about what exactly goes on out here or did go on out here. You will still see the Freeport McMoran mines are active by the smoke that billows from the 
smokestacks, which means there are people actually working here. It's not a ghost town, even though it's an old mining town. There's still active mining activities going on. So you'll see there's people up here with money. And then you've got this old area of the downtown with some nice houses that go up the hills. So people still living out here doing some mining and very much alive in Globe, just not really growing, just staying stable with time. And now from Globe, Miami, we're gonna head back out onto the road to Peridot, Arizona. In case you don't know what a Peridot is, it's actually a little green gemstone that's found in basalt uh, that flows nearby here. And you can actually see the population of Peridot is around 1,266 people. Most of the people living here are Native Americans, which will explain why you see so many casinos in the area. Well, not so many. There are a few, though. The San Carlos Recreation and Wilderness Department here says you must have a, re a recreational permit from the tribe if you plan to actually go out and do some exploring around here. And just up the way here, we're in Bylus, which is actually named after Bylus, the chief from the Eastern White Mountain Apache tribe, located here in Graham County along the Gila River. The whole area around the San Carlos Reservation is quite rugged. Don't expect much modernity other than the casinos. Uh, you will see quite a bit of history for those of you who are prospectors, but again, because it's a reservation, you can't really go out and explore and do much of that. Although if you look on a map, you can find out what's considered reservation and what's actually not considered reservation. But either way, out in this area, I've talked to prospectors who've said they've found everything from old Chinese artifacts out here because of the old Chinese miners that would come out here to join the other miners from the East Coast who were coming from America. So lots of history around this area, including Fort Thomas, which actually ended up getting a name called the worst fort in the army because of a malaria outbreak. And as you keep driving down the Gila River here, you'll come across several other towns such as Eden, Bryce, and then Pima. You also have Thatcher and Safford, which are coming up quickly, but those are the bigger ones in this area all along the Gila River, which is a major river still at this point. It doesn't really get dammed up until it hits the San Carlos Reservoir out there by the Coolidge Dam. And just a bit of geography for you, the Gila River actually used to flow all the way down to Florence and then into Buckeye where it met the Salt River. Uh, but ever since they've dammed it up and created this reservoir, that no longer happens. But it's quite a mighty river coming in from New Mexico. And this part of Arizona is mostly occupied by Mormons and people from the Latter-day Saints Church. So you'll see quite a few churches out here for them. And again, the big industry out here is going to be Freeport McMoran. It's almost like the real king of eastern Arizona is Freeport McMoran, the mining outfit. If you go down to downtown Phoenix, you'll see where the Westin Hotel is. That building is actually called the Freeport McMoran Building. And it's a mixed-use building where they have the hotel as well as the office building. Freeport McMoran is actually one of the largest producers of molybdenum and also copper excavation out of the ground, which is happening here in Arizona. And they own the world's largest gold mine out in Irian Jaya, West Papua, Indonesia, called Grossberg. And this here is Thatcher, where the main industry is, of course, mining. This is a neighboring town with Safford. It's actually quite bustling around here. It's a bit busier than you would assume, considering how old and historical the place is. But again, because of all the mining jobs, there's people out here going around. So the king of eastern Arizona, as I would call it, Freeport McMoran and Company. <laughs> For those of you who like to do some mountain trekking and exploring, there's a couple areas I'd like to mention that are a bit southwest of the Gila River here. Mount Turnbull, which is up by Bylus, you'd probably want to explore there. And then south out here by Safford is Mount Graham. If you go out by Mount Turnbull a little bit towards the west, even further, you'll come to a place called Aravipa. I also recommend exploring around there. Which is known as some of the most beautiful untamed desert you'll find anywhere in the world, especially here in Arizona. It's an underrated destination. Not many roads going out there, but all the Hikers and explorers who do go out there, they end up saying, wow, what a place Aravipa is. 
Now we're headed up to Morency. This is kind of no man's land out here. You won't find too much activity. This is really at the foothills of the White Mountains. So it's quite interesting terrain though, as you'll see the Gila River around here. And then you'll see the White Mountains, really beautiful. And then off to the east, you have New Mexico. So yeah, we're on Highway 191, right around Three Way is where we're arriving now. From Three Way, you either go towards New Mexico or you go towards basically New Mexico towards the south again, which would lead to El Paso, or you go up north into Morency and into the White Mountains. So let's keep progressing along 191 here. Some people consider this part of Arizona to be quite beautiful. In fact, Clifton, where we're headed next, is considered one of the most beautiful places in Arizona by some. At least that's the reputation it has according to the town. But right outside of Clifton is going to be where the Morency Mine is. And if you actually went on Google and you looked at the map, you'd see how much earth has been moved and carved out here in Morency. So they've got a heck of an operation going, meaning they're finding lots of copper. This is a very dense mine. One thing I would like to say is we are considering doing a video about the mining towns in Arizona, highlighting them. That's going to include Bisbee, Tombstone, Jerome, Oatman, some of the ones we've already showed you before, but some new ones like Baghdad. If you guys are interested in us making that video about the top mining towns in Arizona, let us know. These are some places you guys can explore and maybe even consider living if you're looking for property. There are areas where they're kind of off grid, got a little bit of economic activity, but still small enough to really be off the beaten path. So let us know in the comments below. Let's keep going. And you can see how cool it is to be at a town like Clifton or even into Morency here, how it's like sitting there in the hills just emerged where they've got these big massive mines the population here in clifton is around 3300 people and it is gaining a little bit of population although there was a big arizona copper mining strike that happened in 1983 that threatened the entire existence of clifton and morency but while here you'll see there's an old train depot that was built in 1913 and now it's currently used by the chamber of commerce and what we'll do now is we'll let you guys just kind of sit back, relax, and watch the video here as we show you around the old town of Clifton, and then we'll pick back up once we're headed into Morency. Uh, just real quick, here's a look at the Clifton jail cell right here in the cliff. What a crazy place. But you can see just how amazing it is up here. It's really an underrated gem out here in eastern Arizona. It's kind of far to get out here from Phoenix because you got to wind through the roads in the mountains to get out here. But it could be a good day trip for those of you looking for some activities, especially as we head into fall.
Now here we are in the old mining boom town of Morency. If you look at a picture from 1910, you can see just how built up Morency really was. So the population was around 2,000 people in the year 2000, but then in 2010 it went down to 1489. So Morency is kind of in a way one of those places that is losing population. And in a way you could say it's hanging on by a thread because the second the mine dries up and stops producing as much copper as it does and is no longer profitable for Freeport McMoran, they'll shut down the mine and then what's going to happen to Clifton and Morency? They're just going to become ghost towns where people are going to leave and the only thing left is the ghost of the past. And now what we're going to do is actually head up to the mine and show you what the actual outfit looks like. This is a huge operation. I mean, the tires on the bulldozers and the dump trucks down here, they're taller than people. That's how big the tires are. That doesn't even include the truck. These are some massive equipment they got out here. You can see the housing out here is quite modest, but what makes this place quite interesting in my opinion is the dramatic scenery and how they bored through the mountains with these tunnels building these roads. I mean, look at this. You can tell they've got heavy equipment up here, right? Being that this is the largest copper mining outfit in the country, you can see they've got some serious investment put into this place with power lines and roads and tunnels and excavation activity. Really quite the amazing sight to see, almost out of sight, out of mind. Most people in Arizona have no idea such an operation is taking place out in Eastern Arizona. Or maybe they do, they just haven't seen it because it's so far away. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this one and you love videos about Arizona, consider subscribing to this channel, watching some more of our videos by going to the homepage and checking the links below in the description in the comments, and even consider clicking on one of these links next about small towns and even one of our other road trips. See you guys on the next one.